Buddhist Legends. 8C. Story of the Past, Kala Junior and Kala Senior. Monks, 91 cycles of time in the past the exalted Vipassi appeared in the world. At that time two brothers, Mahakala and Kulakala, both of them householders, caused a great field to be planted with rice. One day Kulakala went to the rice field, held a kernel of rice, and ate it, and found it unusually sweet. Shortly afterwards he desired to make a gift of unripe rice to the congregation of monks presided over by the Buddha. So he went to his older brother and said to him, Brother, let us have unripe rice held and cooked in a manner suitable for the Buddhas, and let us bestow the same in alms. What? Say you, brother? No one has ever yet had unripe rice held and given in alms. Nor is anyone likely to do such a thing in the future, don't spoil the crop. The younger brother repeated his suggestion several times. Finally the older brother said, Very well, divide the field into two parts. Do not touch my portion, but do whatever you like in your own portion of the field. Very well, said Kulo Kala. So he divided the field into two parts, hired a large Number of men for manual labor, caused grains of unripe rice to be hauled, had it cooked in rich milk, adding ghee, honey, and sugar, and presented the rice. Thus prepared to the congregation of monks presided over by the Buddha. Saying at the conclusion of the meal, Reverend Sir, by virtue of this, my gift of first fruits may I be the first to win the foremost estate of all, namely, Arachip. So be it, said the teacher, returning thanks. When he went back to the field and looked at it again, he saw that the entire field was filled with heads of growing rice, bound together, as it were, in sheaves. At this sight he experienced the five kinds of joy. Thought he, I am indeed fortunate. When the rice was in the ear, he gave first fruits of rice in the ear. In Association with the residents of the village he bestowed the first fruits of the crop. When the rice was reaped, he gave the first fruits of the reaping, when it was in the sheaf, the first fruits of the sheaves, when it was in the shock, the first fruits of the shocks, when it was in the rick, the first fruits of the ricks. When it was threshed, the first fruits of the threshing floor, when it was ground, the first fruits of the flower. When it was measured, the first fruits of the measuring, when it was put away in the storehouse, the first fruits of the store. Thus he bestowed the first fruits of a single crop nine times. Whatever he took away was made up, and he had a bumper harvest. Goodness keeps him who keeps it. Therefore said the exalted one. Righteousness truly keeps him who keeps righteousness, righteous living brings happiness. Herein is the advantage of living righteously, that he who walks righteously will never go to a state of suffering. Thus, in the dispensation of the supremely enlightened Vipassi, Didana Khandana bestow the gift of first fruits nine times, making the earnest wish to be the first to attain the foremost of all estates. Likewise in the dispensation of the Buddha Pajumadara, a hundred thousand cycles of time in the past, in the city Hamsvati, he gave mighty gifts, and falling at the feet of that exalted Buddha, made the earnest wish to be the first to attain the foremost of all estates, namely, Arachip. Thus I bestowed on him only that for which he made his earnest wish. I show no favoritism in bestowing distinction. 8D Story of the Past, Yasa and Fifty-Four Companions Reverend Sir, what work of merit did the fifty-five noble youths led by Yasa perform? Dash they too made an earnest wish for Arachip at the feet of a certain Buddha and did many works of merit. Subsequently, but before the present Buddha had appeared in the world, they became friends, banded themselves together for the performance of works of merit, and 
devoted themselves to the care of the corpses of paupers. One day, seeing the dead body of a pregnant woman, they carried the body to the cemetery for the purpose of burning it. Tiasa and four of his companions was assigned the duty of burning the corpse, the rest returned and entered the village. As the youth Yasa burned the body, piercing it with stakes and turning it over and over, he grasped the thought of the impurity of the body. This thought he communicated to his four companions also, saying, Behold, brethren, this body. Here and there the skin has burst open, it resembles nothing so much as the skin of a mottled cow. It is impure, stinking, repulsive. Straight away his four companions also grasped the thought of the impurity of the body. In their turn these five companions went to the village and informed the rest of their friends. As for Yasa, he went home and informed his mother and father and wife, and they all developed the thought of impurity. This is the work of merit these youths performed in a previous state of existence. And because of this very work of merit, consciousness of the impurity of the body arose within Yasa's mind in the women's apartments. And thus, because they had acquired the faculties requisite thereto, all of them developed specific attainment. Therefore these youths also obtained precisely that for which they made their earnest wish. I show no favoritism in bestowing distinction. A.T. Story of the Past, Thirty Noble Youths But, Reverend Sir, what work of merit did the thirty noble youths perform? Dash. They also made an earnest wish for heritship at the feet of previous Buddhas and performed works of merit. Subsequently, but before the present Buddha appeared in the world, they were reborn as thirty evildoers, but hearing the admonition addressed to Tundala, they kept the five precepts for sixty thousand years. Thus these men also obtained only that for which they made their earnest wish. I show no favoritism in bestowing distinction. 8F. Story of the Past, Three Brothers Kasapa. But, Reverend Sir, what work of merit was performed by the three brothers? Kasapa, Ruvla Kasapa, Nadi Kasapa, and Gaya Kasapa? Dash they also performed works of merit, making an earnest wish to attain eratship. 92 cycles of time in the past, two Buddhas appeared in the world at the same time, Tissa and Fusa, Fusa's father was King Mahinda. When Fusa attained enlightenment, the king's youngest son became his chief disciple, and the son of the house priest became his second disciple. The king went to the teacher and said, My oldest son is the Buddha, my youngest son is chief disciple, and the son of my house priest is second disciple. And looking upon the three, he said, My very own is the Buddha, my very own is the law, my very own is the order. And thrice he breathed forth the solemn utterance, Praise be unto him that is highly exalted, all worthy, supremely enlightened. Then he prostrated himself before the feet of the teacher and said, Reverend Sir, now, at the end of a life lasting ninety thousand years, it is time, as it were, for me to sit down and close my eyes in slumber. So long as I live. Go not to the door of others' houses, but receive the four requisites from me alone. Having thus obtained the teacher's consent, the king thereafter ministered to him regularly. Now the king had three other sons besides, the eldest of whom had a retinue of five hundred soldiers, the middlemost three, and the youngest two. One day, they sought permission of their father to entertain their brother, the Buddha. Fusa, but failed to obtain it. This happened many times. Shortly afterwards, an insurrection broke out on the frontier, and they were sent to suppress it. Succeeding in restoring order on the frontier, they returned to their father. Their father embraced them, kissed their heads, and said to them, Dear sons, I grant you whatever you desire. Very well, your majesty, said they, 
accepting his offer. When, after a few days, their father again said, Dear sons, I grant you whatever you desire, they replied, Your Majesty, we desire naught else. But only this, that henceforth we may entertain our brother, grant us this boon. I will not grant you this boon, dear sons. If you are unwilling to grant us this privilege permanently, then grant it to us for seven years. That will I not, dear sons. Well then, grant us the privilege for six years, or five, or four, or three, or two years, or for one year, or for seven months, or six, or five, or four, or three, or two months, or for one month. That will I not, dear sons. Well then, your majesty, make it one month for each of us, grant us this privilege for three months in all. Very well, dear sons, then entertain your brother for three months. Now all three brothers had a single treasurer and a single steward, the latter of whom had a retinue of twelve Nahudas of serving men. The three brothers summoned the treasurer and the steward and said to them, during the coming three months we shall take upon ourselves the ten precepts, put on yellow robes, and reside with the teacher. In our absence it will be your duty to administer the alms, every day you are to provide all the food, both hard and soft, for ninety thousand monks and a thousand soldiers. From henceforth we shall have nothing at all to say. So the three brothers took their retinue of a thousand men took upon themselves the ten precepts, put on yellow robes, and began residence in the monastery. The treasurer and the steward joined forces and performed the duty of almsgiving by turns, taking provisions from the storehouses of the three brothers and bestowing them in alms. But when the children of the serving men cried for rice porridge and other kinds of food, the treasurer and the steward would give them what they cried for, even before the congregation of monks arrived. The result was that the congregation of monks received only what was left over at the end of a meal, and not a fresh supply of food at all. Finally, the treasurer and the steward became so greedy that they would take food, and, pretending that they were going to give it to the children, eat it themselves. The mere sight of the pleasing food they were unable to resist. They and their associates numbered 84,000 men. Because they ate food which it was their duty to give to the congregation of monks, when they died and their bodies were dissolved, they were reborn in the world of ghosts. When the three brothers and their thousand men died, they were reborn in the world of the gods and spent 92 cycles of time in passing from one celestial world to another. Thus did those three brothers perform works of merit at that time, making the earnest wish to attain eratship. What they received was only that for which they made their earnest wish. I show no favoritism in giving what I give. Now at that time their steward was Bimbisa'ura. Their treasurer was the lay disciple Vizika, and the three royal princes were the three ascetics of the matted locks. Their serving men, reborn at that time among the ghosts, after passing from one state of existence to another, both good and evil, were reborn in this present world cycle in the world of the ghosts for the space of four boot intervals. In this present world cycle, they approached first of all the exalted. Kakazanda, whose term of life was forty thousand years, and asked him, Tell us when we shall obtain something to eat. He replied, You will receive nothing to eat in my time, but after me the great earth will be elevated. A league, and the Buddha Kanagamana will appear, you had best ask him. They waited all that time, and when the Buddha Kanagamana appeared, asked him. He replied, you will receive nothing to eat in my time, but after me the great earth will be elevated a league, and the Buddha Kasapa will appear, you had best ask him. They waited all that time, and when the Buddha Kasapa 
appeared, asked him. He replied, You will receive nothing to eat in my time. But after me the great earth will be elevated a league, and the Buddha Gautama will appear. At that time your kinsman Bimbisaura will be king, he will give alms to the teacher and will make over to you the merit acquired by that act. At that time you will receive something to eat. The length of the period intervening between two Buddhas was to them as the morrow. When the Tathagata appeared in the world and King Bimbisaura gave alms on the first day and they failed to receive the fruit thereof, they waited until it was night, and then made a fearful noise and showed themselves to the king. When the king went to Veluvana on the following day, he related the incident to the Tathagata. Said the teacher, Great King, 92 cycles of time in the past, in the dispensation of the Buddha Fussa, these ghosts were kinsmen of yours. They ate food which it was their duty to give to the congregation of monks, and because of this were reborn in the world of ghosts. Passing through the round of existences, they asked the Buddhas, Kakazanda, Kanikamana, and Kasapa when they should obtain food, and the Buddhas told them this and that. All this time they desired greatly to receive your alms, and the reason why they acted as they did last night was that, when you gave alms, they failed to receive the fruit thereof. But, Reverend Sir, in case I were to give alms now, would they receive the fruit thereof? Yes. Great King. On the following day the king invited the congregation of monks presided over by the Buddha, bestowed abundant offerings, and said, Reverend Sir, henceforth may celestial food and drink be the portion of these ghosts. And when he had thus transferred to the ghosts the merit of his offering, they received celestial food and drink. On the following day the ghosts made their appearance naked. Said the king to the Buddha, Today, Reverend Sir, these ghosts made their appearance naked, and asked him what he should do. Said the teacher, Great King, you did not give them clothes. So on the following day the king presented robes to the congregation of monks presided over by the Buddha, saying, Henceforth may they possess celestial raiment. And when he had thus made over to them the merit of his offering, instantly they became possessed of celestial raiment, whereupon they put off their ghostly forms and took on the forms of celestial beings. When the teacher returned thanks, he said, without the walls they stand, reciting the extramural formula. At the conclusion of his words of thanksgiving 84, thousand living beings obtained comprehension of the law. Thus did the teacher expound the law, relating the story of the three brothers of the matted locks of the three brothers of the matted locks of the three brothers of the